I think the re- second phase of the recession happens in the summer. I think it's truncated. I don't think it lasts that long, maybe you know, six months, six to nine months. And then you're going to see stagflation like we have never before seen in this country. The Fed has been able to print away every bear market and every recession since 1987. And that has eventually engendered asset bubbles. They have no other choice because if they let asset bubbles implode and debt deflation to occur now, it wouldn't be a recession. It would be a depression. With the market now expecting less than two rate cuts this year, perhaps none at all until next year, according to Bank of America, what does that mean for the economy? Money manager Michael Pento of Pento Portfolio Strategies expresses deep concern about the impact on the economy. He fears for the middle class, which he believes is being devastated by these developments. Pento predicts a disinflationary recession in the latter half of 2024, followed by an era of stagflation in early to mid-2025, surpassing anything seen before. For the past 18 months, the inverted yield curve, a reliable recession signal, has persisted without an economic downturn. However, historical data shows that an inversion in the 2 to 10 Treasury spread has accurately forecasted every recession since 1955. Additionally, the weakening labor market, a pillar of resilience in the post-pandemic era, further indicates a looming downturn for the U.S. economy. Pento suggests that the recession has been temporarily delayed by the injection of $2.5 trillion through the Fed's reverse repo facility, which has offset the tightening of monetary policy to some extent. However, he anticipates a second phase of the recession to emerge in the summer. Bank of America is betting on a soft landing, with its experts saying that the Fed's rate hikes over the last year and a half should ultimately weaken growth and lead to higher unemployment rates, but not cause a recession. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. The Fed has been able to print away every bear market and every recession since 1987. And that has eventually engendered asset bubbles and debt levels that are just you know, unserviceable and untenable. And, and now, because they've printed away every, ass, every recession and every bear market, they're now compelled to keep inflation rising to prevent asset bubbles from imploding. They have no other choice because if they let asset bubbles implode and debt deflation to occur now, it wouldn't be a recession. It would be a depression that we would enter. And they're doing their best to make the government appear solvent, even though it is, in fact, insolvent. You know, why do I think that we have a recession in the card? So first of all, the index of leading economic indicators has been down 21 of the last 22 months. <laughs> the National Federation of Independent Small Business Optimism Index has been down for has been spent 27 consecutive months below the 50 year average and that is of 98 household net interest income has dropped by 200 billion dollars in this current fed tightening cycle cuz this tight tightening cycle consumers have more floating rate debt and much more of their savings is in dividend stocks dividend producing income not bonds. Remember, now when bonds yielded nothing, they sold bonds and bought stocks, and that maintained itself for a long time. So they're actually, and this is a study not done by Michael Pento and company. A study was done by Bloomberg, uh, $200 billion in a loss of net income. The 10-year note minus the two-year note yield is now in the longest inversion in history. And it's, it has a near-perfect recession predictor since 1955. There's one exception, 1965. The economy didn't hit a recession that time, but GDP GDP dropped from 10% to 0.2%. We've had a positive, we've had a positive real Fed funds rate for the past 12 months. And every time it's been positive for about a year, positive about a year since the year 2000, we've had a recession. Personal and corporate bankruptcies are soaring. It's up 19 months in a row. Uh, corporate defaults are the most since Q1 of two thousand um, since Q1 of 2021, and bank lending and money supply growth are contracting. So those are some of the examples of why I say that a recession is recession was held in abeyance by the emptying of that two and a half trillion dollars in the reverse repo facility. Think of that as two and a half trillion dollars of quantitative easing 
which more than offset the, the trillion dollars in quantitative tightening, a trillion and a half in quantitative tightening. Um, I think the second phase of the recession happens in the summer. I think it's truncated. I don't think it lasts that long, maybe you know six months, six to nine months. And then you're going to see stagflation like we have never before seen in this country. The U.S. is grappling with a record $34.5 trillion in debt, triple the Eurozones, and set to hit 134% of GDP by 2029. Elevated deficits and skyrocketing interest payments may evoke fears of imminent fiscal crisis if countermeasures are not adopted. Fresh inflation data released on Friday reinforced Federal Reserve Chair. Jerome Powell's recent message that high interest rates are likely to persist. The Fed's preferred measure of underlying inflation rose by 0.3% in March and 2.8% from a year earlier, matching the previous month's figures. Additionally, earlier figures from this year were slightly revised upward, according to government data. Pento criticizes Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's dismissal of inflation concerns, arguing that inflation has consistently exceeded 2% for three years and is accelerating. He questions Powell's strategy of hoping for lower inflation to justify rate cuts, warning of the consequences of further monetary easing amidst high inflation and inflated asset prices. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. Consumer debt is at an all-time record high. It's There's $20 trillion of consumer debt. That's up from $15.6 trillion in 2019. 40% of the Russell 2000 is unprofitable. Corporate debt is now $13.7 trillion, up 100% since 2007. Record 49% of GDP. Corporate defaults have soared by 80% since 2023. $1.8 trillion have to be refinanced by 2025. There's a record $1.3 trillion of credit card debt. Delinquency is up 100% since 2021, highest on record. Auto loan delinquencies are the highest in a decade. And as I mentioned before, 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Now, there's something called, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm creating a scenario to show you how much debt there is outstanding and why it's just, it's just not serviceable. It may be at 0.3% when the 10-year note was 0.3, but not at five and a quarter. So private credit, which are loans to businesses who can't get a loan from a bank or issue corporate debt, that's that, that was $100 billion dollars pre the global financial crisis. Now it's $1.7 trillion. Whoa. The government has a trillion dollars in interest payments in 2025. You know, in, 2000 and 20, in 2007, the total debt was $160 billion. Now we're paying a trillion dollars just in interest payments. Of course, we know, 100, you know it's 123.5% total debt to GDP. Uh, it was 60% of GDP in the global financial crisis. The national debt is 733% of our revenue. And we're adding to that over 40% every year because of our debt and deficits. A fifth of all of our revenue is spent on interest payments. Uh, these are all facts I'm giving you. This is yeah. why Powell, I call him, you know, Powell is pooping his pants. I like it, the alliteration <laughs> there. Yeah. He's pooping his pants. And he's out there doing this, this shtick. He's like, Oh, you know, inflation's coming down, but it's going to be bumpy and lumpy and schmumpy. It, no, Powell, inflation isn't coming down. It's been above 2% for three years. It's going higher away from 2%, and it's going away from 2% at a faster rate. So who are you? I mean, how much longer are you going to lie about this? Here's where the rubber meets the road, because I manage money for a living. You're lying about this in the hopes that someday soon you're going to get your wish. You can say, oh, he will get this great inflation print. Wow, we're closer to 2%. I can start cutting rates. But at 3.5% at headline CPI, and with, with home prices out of reach and asset prices at record levels, how much do you think he's going to be able to cut before he you know, sends the dollar crashing and inflation up even further? And, and there's one more thing I just have to mention. There's a good chance. This is the first time really since, since 1981 that the Fed's going to be cutting rates when we have an inflation problem, right? What happens if they cut rates and end QT and go back into QE and restart the bank term funding program and maybe uh, get rid of the the um, reserve requirement, uh, the uh, the capital rate ratio requirement for banks? What if they do all this stuff? And they, guess what? Long term rates soar, right? 
They've solved nothing. Nothing. The ongoing global debate revolves around whether the post-COVID-19 pandemic inflation can be mitigated without triggering a recession. Alongside mounting debt, the Middle East crisis poses another significant threat to the U.S. economy. The escalating tensions between Iran, Israel, and Palestine jeopardize global equity and commodity markets. Any potential crash in these sectors would have ripple effects on the U.S. economy and financial system. How might policymakers balance the need to address inflation with concerns about triggering a recession? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. If you found this content helpful, give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to stay updated. Thank you for being a part of this journey with us.